know that you have been working extremely hard on something, almost obsessively, almost to the point where you know that you're, you know that you're causing yourself pain. You need to feel it. In, our, in, 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 in some ways, you're intentionally doing it. You need to feel it to keep you awake, to keep you in the game, to make sure that every single aspect of you is on fire and on point and razor sharp focus because this is not something that you're going to allow to fail. This is 100% brilliant manifestation and there is no option. There is no option for failure. Because this is that moment in your life when you're actually going to win and win big. But you have to look like the loser to win as big as you're going to win. The associative pain is really what you have a relationship with now. It's not the thing anymore. It's almost like you've been asked to give up something that means everything to you. Um, or you had to witness something that meant so much to you being taken away. Somehow I'm getting the vibe that um, you didn't, you were, you didn't, you didn't react well, right? You, you didn't, it, it, it affected you in the way that it was almost like almost like a refusal, refusal to let go, right? And, and determination to get what you wanted or what you pictured anyway. And um, that caused more grief. It almost, it almost sucked you into a vacuum of despair for a while. This has been, a, I'm just saying, this has been a really rough, rough week for <laughs> the faithful. Um, and I, it, it's, it's not, it's likely that you have had your faith really, really tested, especially with what was taken from you. Um, I feel like you've had many, many conversations with angels and spirit uh, manifesting lit candles directly engaged in and involving this specific topic. And then to have something out of the blue happen like where it's, it's almost like you weren't even heard right where where what you had thought you worked for or manifested wasn't even taken into consideration for most of us it's just something that we kept really close to our heart it meant a lot to us maybe other people didn't even know this is why we lit our candles every single night they didn't even know that we were worried or concerned they didn't they didn't know they didn't have to know it was something that we that meant something to us and we really believed it and then it's like it's almost like if you've ever seen the, a Christmas story, uh, Ralphie's, Ralphie's like a sh shotgun that he wanted. And I mean, what happened, what happens when he gets the shotgun? He almost puts his eye out, right? Like everybody's worried. But I think the point of it was having faith that, you know, people are listening, uh, when, especially when it feels like they're not, especially when, it, you know, it's, it's like, it's like before that that um what was it red rocket what was it um the the gun that he wanted um it's like before he they before his parents revealed that they actually got him that um they kind of played it like there was nothing else under the tree for him and not only that but he had to wear that horrible bunny suit that was just ridiculous and embarrassing and degrading it's like he thought the worst had happened it's like he thought that's that really like his heart was broken because of lack of love. And he just felt like he wasn't loved. Like, how could I talk about this for hours? And how could I endlessly ask for just this one thing? And this is the specific thing that you seem to overlook and deny to me. Um, it could even be that you got to a point where you give, gave up on it completely. Like this was just something that you actually kind of convinced yourself to stop wanting and not convinced yourself, in, but it, kind of in a good way. It's like, okay, then you know what? I want to reconnect with spirit. What hurts me most now is I feel like unloved. I feel disconnected and I want to reconnect. So I'm just going to open up the floor for spirit to have a conversation with me and I'm going to ask spirit you know what is it that you want me to have what what is it that you cleared this space because I cleared space in my life to make room for this 
And maybe I even took chances that I normally wouldn't take, you know, risk, whatever you were risking, money, humiliation, whatever it was, you definitely put some shit on the table for this. And you normally wouldn't do it. But the level of how important it was to you and really how, you know, it wasn't just your ego. You were feeling drawn to it. You felt connected to it. So it's almost like, what fucking voices am I listening to? What am I hearing? Like, like why, why, why is my, why was my interpretation so off? So the denial of this wasn't just like a, wah, wah, wah. I didn't get what I wanted. It was disheartening. It was a feeling of what have I been believing in this whole time? If it's like, I didn't even hear, I didn't even connect correctly. Like, was I always ask, was I asking for the wrong thing? Was I, was I, you know, how did I hear this wrong? And and how did I feel this? So, so it was almost like something happening where you didn't, you you were thrown into a state of doubting your own intuition, uh, of doubting spirit's love of you or your connection with spirit. There was just a sense of being thrown into uh, a sense where you didn't almost fit in your own life or know your own life. In some ways, somebody else winning was the burden for you. It was like, because that, that for you, it meant that your opportunity had gotten squashed. Like it's it it looked like now there was no more opportunities open because somebody else won. Somebody else's victory was a huge burden to you. It's like you worked so fucking hard and then you just get put down from you. This is a big loss. Could have been an actual death of somebody that was never really good to you. And I think whatever this relationship was, it twisted you on what to expect or how to expect to be loved, right? Or what to expect out of life. It's always like there was always competition. Like you could never stand out and be special, right? It always, it always felt like that. It always seems like somebody else is getting recognized and noticed and not you. There might have even been confusion on the part of the decision makers. This is a, I, I remember I was saying, why are you being told now? This is Virgo energy. It's you're being told now because God wants you to know you're fucking loved, right? You're being told now that all this disappointment is, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be repaid to you like, like a hundred thousand times. Now, current current status in your brain right now is enjoy the moment with what you have. You may not have everything that you want, but you have joy and you have a good life and you will have enough money and money will be okay. You'll be able to get over this hump. You will transform. This is scorpionic energy. This is, this is the birth canal. Okay. All the concerns that you were worried about melt away or are confronted. It's almost like you've been stressed out and you'll stress out until this time. You know, and I got that in your YouTube reading, like you feel like you have to stress out or you will stress out. It's almost like you want to remind the angels you haven't given up. You don't need to stress out. But nine, nine is this new opportunity is almost here. This chance to take a new leap, it's almost here. And this is going to be your dreams uh, coming true. Your wishes granted, despite the fact that you think you're not going to get it. You are going to get it. And it's because something redirects. There's a change that has to be made. Something happens so that there's a change that has to be made. That's why Scorpio is here, right? Maybe some something happens to somebody or 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 there's some kind of confusion or not confusion, um conflict and they have to leave. And it's like you're stressed out, you think forget it, it's over with, it's over with, but that's not the case. It's not over with. Luck for them, God forbid, opens up opportunities for you. You're not bringing this bad luck on, upon them. You've got nothing to do with it. It's just saying that something is going to happen in a creative process. It's going to change and go a different direction. And that different direction is now all of a sudden going to point back to you. It's like you could sit around and think to yourself, oh, poor me, poor me. My life is so shitty. But A, that's not really your MO, right? That's not you. Um, and B, oh God, what a shitty space to live in every single day, right? It doesn't even feel good. Um, the thing is this, even when you've got into that conscious place where you're like, yeah, I got to move on from this. I'm, I'm got to be, I got to be good without it. In fact, maybe I'm better off without it completely. Okay. It's good 
it's a good start. Nothing that you could have done would have changed things or made them any different. Um, and certainly uh, this, uh, it's got major, major fourth house energy all over it. So that means this is some shit that was going on before you even were old enough to decide what could go on with yourself. What is happening now is that rendering of life, right? Rendering your life the way that you want it to look. When you're born, that's, this is your fourth house energy. Your fourth house generates, this is your family, the family you're born into. Um, it generates a script for you that you kind of read until you grow up and realize this is bullshit. This was just a script. This wasn't reality. I get to write my own. But the thing is that script usually does provide you some sort of security and that security is, form, is, is formidable for your developing years. Just the sense of security. Forget about the bullshit you have to read in the script. It's just a sense of at least I'm getting some direction. The problem here was that you never really got any script at all. Nobody gave you fucking direction. Or you were responsible for writing a script way too fucking young. Yes, what's happening now is, is there's this direct play with now in some ways, it's all coming back and doubling back on itself. Like, uh, like a croissant, only not as delicious. You know, it's like, it's if you watch croissants being made, they're like fold and refold and refold the puff pastry with butter in between them. There's like, there's like sheets of butter in between each fold of the puff pastry. It's so fucking delicious. But that's kind of what it is. It just keeps folding over and over and over and over and over on top of itself, but not buttery and not delicious. And you know, I do feel like you feel really uh, robbed and deceived, maybe di really direct deception, this, depending on how close this is, right? Because it, it might not be from your fourth house. You might have a wonderful family. It may just be like something that hits home. And that's where I'm picking up this energy. It like really, it hits home. It, it, in other words, hits home. It, it, um, it, it directly impacts sort of expectations that you had or direction that you were moving in or just the way that you feel about yourself every single day. Oh, shit, you know? Um, you are going to get a lot of pushback, but what will show more than anything is that you did not give up and you stood your ground. You have to come out and stand your ground. You have to do what you need to do based on what you believe in. So what is this all about? That you're, it's against the crowd. It's, it's not popular opinion. There's a lot of competition and a lot of contention, um, against what you believe, or at least it's, it maybe has to do with your family, right? The sense of, um, something about you in your family was not received very well or was not going to be received very well. Very toxic reaction to something about you in particular. Um, and you're like, fuck you. I, then, then don't be in my life. You know, go fuck yourself. This is a lot of craziness, a lot of hype. Maybe you're seeing the truth about a situation when nobody else does, right? Which you can do. You see that. Uh, nothing is wasted. Um, treasure in a trash heap. You see opportunity where other people don't see opportunity. And there's a lot of contention be because not just because it's, it's almost because they're pissed that they didn't think about it. So now they can't acknowledge that you thought about it because it's taking away from the way they feel about themselves. But fuck them. Stand your ground because there's a lot of haterade around you right now. So this is an energy of fear. And that's where it's coming from. Capricornian energy could be coming from Saturn. Saturn is in Aquarius right now. It's almost like it's, it's acknowledging it's intentionally restricting you by using the crowd against you. <laughs> fuck that shit, right? I know. I know. Temperance. Find a way to make this impossible situation work. There's a transition that you're going through this portion in your life, but it's not, let me say this. It is not about the world around you. It is about the world inside of you. You are, you have changed that you are ready to change. You know, that what you used to care about, you don't give a shit about anymore. Um, and what you maybe used to find irritating or, um, unattractive or unappealing or uninteresting. Now you're interested. You're like, you're curious. Um, why are you curious? Because you're more curious. That's a born without boundaries trademark, baby. You're curious about different aspects of who you are. You know, you're curious about broadening and expanding yourself. And maybe this hasn't happened to you in a long time.
it hasn't happened to you for many, many, many years, you know, and, and maybe you forgot that self wonderment, that wonderment of exploring what you're capable of and allowing yourself to be curious and to try different things. There was a really steadfast, I want to get shit done energy about you. And that's great, dude, because that's what we're here on earth to do, right? We're here to get shit done. But there's a step back from that. I just want to get shit done attitude. And there's a step up toward, no, I want to, I want to understand. I want to know. I want to see if I can do this. I'm not trying to be the best at it, which is really unlike you, but it is. It's basically desperately seeking mentors, people who want it, you want to learn from, right? You, you want to learn. This is your time. You're curious. You want to learn. You want to learn different aspects of yourself, different dynamics of yourself. You're looking for teachers. Now, those teachers don't have to come in. I'm taking college courses. No, they can come in the form of people that you're dating that you would have never dated before. They could come in the form of music that you're listening to that you never used to like. They could come in the form of a book that you're reading, right? They could come in the form of a television show that, you know, you always like horror movies and now all of a sudden you're into rom-coms. Don't fucking question it. Trust yourself because you are looking for teachers that are helping you develop your North Node or develop toward your higher self, your greater self, the self that you're supposed to become before you uh, hike it out of here. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense that you are going to start to question different aspects in yourself, not in hatred. Oh, no, no, no. This isn't about self-shame. This is about self-curiosity. Like, why, why did I commit myself to this for so long? Why do I have all these books and I never even fucking read them. Like, what do I think they're doing for me? That's the question. That's the depth that you're going to. Why, what do I think holding on to all this is doing for me? And when you get to the, you really want that answer now. Without shame, without judging yourself, you're like, no, I really, I really want to know. What, what do I think? What do I think I am? Because I have all these books that I haven't opened in 20 years. Like, will I, do I, do I really like them? Do I think I'm holding on to them or keeping them for something or what? Like what's going on? Maybe, maybe I'm just going to give you a little bit of a hint. Um, maybe they are, um, things you feel you have to hold on to because they were dreams that are unfulfilled. They were things about you that you never really wanted to give up on, but somehow you did. You let yourself get distracted. You always maybe were curious or thought that I would get back to it and you haven't come back to it. Well, that's now's a great time to come back to it. If it's coming back to a part of you that needs to be nurtured. If not, it's just a sense of well, why was I interested? Did I think that being an artist would make me brave? Okay, then I'm interested in being brave. Maybe I don't give a fuck about being an artist anymore. I can get rid of all these art books, right? And my first step in courage is to be brave enough to let go of the stuff I'm really not interested in anymore. Like sometimes we hold on to things like we hold on to things because they think we think they make us something. We've attached a value to them. You know, it, we, we like like, oh, if we do this or if I'm into this, it means I'm this which isn't necessarily true. And it could just be cluttering up your space and getting in your way and actually getting in the way of you actually becoming this. This is the time to really get brave and dig down and be curious about yourself and find teachers who will teach you about different aspects and dynamics of yourself that will help you elevate. This is what you're going through right now. It's, it's sort of like that, that tempered metal that gets stronger as it gets heated. And there is something that is getting heated or it has been heated, right? And so now what you're really being asked to do is move through it. And I know that, that that's not the easiest thing, but think about that, think about it. It's like, why would something end just because there's conflict? Conflict can breed strength. It, discomfort, which is what conflict is. Conflict isn't breaking, but it is discomfort, right? Discomfort is not a sign of, oh, this isn't meant to be. A call for you to let go and release. Maybe anger, frustration, frustration at yourself, fear. Fear, um, fear kind of is that emotion that leads us to extremes. It basically tells us it's only one way or the other and there's nothing else. Oh my God, that's a bunch of bullshit. There is so much else. 
There are so many other options and there are so many ways through this situation. And yeah, it's going to take a little bit of you getting over yourself. And it's going to take a little bit of them getting over them, getting over themselves. But it's a lot better. I always feel like it's better to pay the consequences for the, your truth than it is to um, 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 take the rewards from your lie. You know, it, because then it, it's a lie that you have to perpetuate. And there's no amount of reward that can really compensate for how uncomfortable it becomes to not be able to be yourself and to have to continue to perpe like perpetually be somebody that you're not. And I, I kind of feel like there's, there's this, there's this sense about you that you've been tolerating something, but you haven't been happy about it. But the bottom line is just because there's conflict doesn't mean there can't be resolution. And when you get through conflict with somebody, it actually can bring you closer and show you how much integrity they have. Because that's really when we see somebody's integrity, right? That's really when we see somebody's strength is when um, when there are imperfections and when there are uh, challenges and when there are struggles. You really don't know somebody until you see how they deal with conflict. Uh, and that's really what's going on. How do you deal with conflict? Do you allow the conflict to come out? Or do you instead decide to try to hide it so that you don't ever have to confront it at all? Because that's a way of dealing with conflict too. But it's really cowardly. And it's really giving up. If you look in this card, she's letting go of, you know, what, what she has to say. She's speaking her mind. And then this card pops out. And this card pops out. You have to let go in order to make room for the beauty that comes after the conflict. You have to allow the conflict to happen is what I'm saying. You think like this is the worst ever. This is the worst thing I've ever experienced. This is this is horrible. I definitely don't want to go down this path. And the path leads to life and the path leads to light and the path leads to a whole new adventure. And that's why I'm going to ask you to trust these energies. But you have to be completely sincere and honest with the fact that they're pissing you off. As long as you can be respectful, no swearing, no cursing, no accusations, just be honest about, I'm disappointed. This is how I feel. This is what I wanted. This is what I envisioned. Uh, and how, because how are they supposed to know unless you let them know? This is what really lets you get to know each other. This is when you really start to make that eye contact. This is when you really start to ignite. There's something, it's almost like, it's almost like, I mean, check this out, man. There's a little partying going on. There's a little hanky panky. There's a connection with somebody, but then there's that real fire. You know, it's, it's more than attraction because it's, it's almost like you felt their fire, right? There's, there's that oomph that other people don't have. And that only comes by really being yourselves with each other. There's lots of emotion. Let it go, let it out, don't hold it back. It's bubbling up, it's coming out. And you know, the people that you can be honest with your emotions around are your fucking people. Like they're the people that are your people. There's no better people than those people. And let the, these emotions are bubbling up. It's hard, right? Because you feel like I was never able to open up before. And this is your central energy of just being held back by your emotions. You're held back by these emotions that are bogging you down. And that's why these emotions need to come out and need to come up. You need to trust that everything's going to be okay if you share what you're really feeling with somebody. Don't fit in. This is not your time to fit in. This is the time that you stand out. Shed that old skin. You're passing, you're passing through. You're letting go of what you used to be or what you used to assume you had to be. You're shedding that. You're done. In other words, this is a life cycle that's finishing out for you. Something is changing and that something is you. You've grown out of what you used to be and now you're growing into your dreams. And do you see how they have a very similar shape? It's almost like one's the, one's the positive, one's the negative. And I don't mean positive, negative, like, like, like a, a negative as in camera, film. You know, it's like one's negative space and one's the positive space, right? But it's the perfect fit for each other. I'm just saying, I'm saying it's like something has gone, take, been taken out of concept and, and put into reality. Check this out. I feel alone, but you also got step away from the crowd. You are alone. You are singular. You are being singled out right now.
you, you know, yeah, yeah. I feel alone doesn't mean I feel lonely, okay? There's a strength here, right? There's a hope here, right? I will rejoice. I will rejoice in everything that I am standing my own ground and also being seen. It's like I have to step out and show them I am special. Do anything. You've fallen in love with a purpose, right? Finding a way to do the work that you love and make money doing the work that you love so that you don't have to do anything else. This is you moving forward. It's the reason why you're taking on more and more and more and more and more is because you know you have to work your fucking ass off to make your dreams come true. And I feel like that, I feel like that's actually what's going on. You don't care what price you have to pay. You're gonna fucking work your ass off to get the things that you want because they're important to you. And I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna make your dreams come true. You're, you're going to make your dreams come true. But in, in a way, the price that you pay is that you're disconnected and you're not emotionally connecting with people. I'm not sure you care that much because what you care about is your passion. And it's almost like you're stuck to it. It's like a religion for you. Peace out. I, just go somewhere. I'm not even kidding you. Go somewhere where you can have fun and be by yourself or be surrounded by people who uh, are vibing high, right? You need to get out energy. That's the biggest problem for you. Like to be around people who are stuck feels like literally nails on a chalkboard to you right now. You cannot be fucking stuck. Oh, you're kind of like, you're kind of like, what are you talking about? Why don't you want to move? Why don't you want to get out there? Why don't you want to, why don't you want to do things with me? There's so much life out there. There's life inside of you. That's why you find life out there, right? Because there's life in you. But the life in you is not always contagious. Sometimes it's intimidating as fuck. Not your fault. Not your fucking fault. Not my circus, not my monkeys. And you're just like, I'm ready. You're ready for an adventure. You got the energy, you got the bags packed. Why? Why? Oh, you feel so good. You feel so good inside. And then there's all these other craziness. Let me explain with the craziness of other people. Because I think this will help you out a lot. Because I've seen a few of you and honestly, you look looking fucking miserable. It's like everybody's going through a birth canal right now. And it is horrendously frightening. This is why we don't have any memories of passing through our mother's putang because it would traumatize the shit out of us. And we forget about Mother's Day. We'd never be able to look the bitch in the eye. Um, cause all we could think about is I'm just saying, it's like, there are reasons why we don't remember shit. Right. But, but, um, everybody's going through that right now. Maybe not you. You're burning with passion. You know, your direction. You can't wait. And the, the issue is other people may be bringing you down because you're so ready and you're so certain and you're so sure, but everybody else is not. They're scared or they're going through pain or they're doing what's most difficult to do, which is they're facing themselves and they're facing all the ways that they didn't grow up or didn't prepare themselves and should have, or, you know, got started too late in life or, you know, like they're facing all this shit. And it's, it's, it's ugly lessons. It's ugly lessons. But it, listen, it's going to teach them. It's going to make them grow. It's going to eventually lead them to be better versions of who they are. And yeah, you know, you're, you're try to be supportive, right? Absolutely. It says that there's so much them and there's so much you. And right now the differences are really, really stark and, and causing a lot of issues. Um, not in issues in how you feel, but in issues and how you feel loved and how loved you feel by them. In you and a lot of sadness, maybe even to the point of tears, um, because this is, uh, this is very close to your heart or this person is very close to your heart and it's angry. It's making you angry. It's, it's like, it's like this shouldn't be so difficult. And, you know, it should be simple. It should be easy. It should be straightforward. Why am I being bounced around from sitting? The problem is with your mind, you see all the system failures and that's starting to distract you. Like you see all the places where it should have gone better and it could have gone better and it would have gone smoother if 
take fucking notes. It might actually help you feel a little bit more secure and a little bit more controlled in this situation is to take down notes and to dictate to somebody. Of course, that's just going to piss them off, especially if you're dealing with like DMV or something. And that's how I, what I feel like right now. I feel like that's the energy you're up against, the kind of idiocy, the systemic idiocy that is like DMV. I'm not saying it's literally DMV, but that's kind of how it is. It's like being stuck at the DMV and nothing makes fucking sense because it doesn't make sense because you can see where the system's failing and that's almost distracting you in some ways right because because it's so distracting because it's so all over the place because it's so much like like but it's you it's who you are and you're showing up with your full capacity and you're for real the frustration is seeing the failure that doesn't have to be there that's what the frustration is. And honestly, we are all getting plucked in our Achilles heel right now. You know, we're having to see um, what's, what ways we sabotage ourselves or, you know, uh, like what, what's, what's, what, are, what are our weak areas that we have to work on? Um, we, we're all doing that right now. And, I, and, and, it's, and no, you're not safe. You're not safe from it. But um I know that you're in the right, like there's something about it that I'm, I'm sure that you, you understand and you're completely devoted to the understanding or getting other people to comprehend that, that your side of the story, that you are correct and you are correct. You really are owed something. I'm telling you, this is like the best week of your life, but it's going to hurt like hell. It's going to hurt like hell the best week of your life but it's gonna hurt like hell because it's gonna point out all the shitty shitty shit shit that you've been doing and you didn't realize you were doing and that's what's so empowering about it is like once you realize what you're doing you can change that shit somebody ignored you and moved on without you and there was so much heartbreak because of the decision that was made there's a tower coming for them not because they deserve it but they're like in this situation everything looks perfect right something's going to upset the flow something's going to happen and upset the flow and then you're going to be given a shot to show them what you got and don't ask can I tell this to you, please? Don't ask. You don't want to know. You don't want to fucking know because it's not your business. Justice is going to be served. There's something here about a decision that's going to be fair and has to be made based on um, something from the past that happened. That's what I tell you. There's a new decision being made on something that upset you and hurt, killed you from the past. That's going to be your dreams come true. And this, this, this decision being made is, is a, it's like a judgment. It's almost like not, nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves to be hurt or disappointed. It's not you, you, first of all, you have no hand in this. You have no hand in this. The only hand you have is the hand that says, I'm ready. I can do it. You're going to have to wait for it.